In this video, I'm gonna show you how to hack Cisco switches using Kali Linux. In a previous video, I showed you how to get Kali Linux downloaded and installed on a Windows 10 computer. So have a look at the video which I've linked here or below if you haven't got Kali Linux installed and running. I basically show you how to download a pre-built version of Kali Linux and import it into VMware Workstation Player, which is free software that allows you to run Kali Linux on your Windows 10 computer. Now, before we get started, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video if you enjoy it, and please click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video. All right, without further ado, let me show you how to hack Cisco networks. In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate the use of Yersinia, which is a framework for performing layer two attacks. It allows you to attack multiple network protocols, including spanning tree, CDP or Cisco Discovery Protocol, DTP or Dynamic Trunking Protocol, DHCP, HSRP, 802.1Q, 802.1X, ISL, and VLAN Trunking Protocol or VTP. So basically this application allows you to hack multiple protocols in Cisco networks. Doesn't just apply to Cisco networks, but some of these protocols such as CDP, DTP, and HSRP are Cisco proprietary protocols. So this application is really geared for hacking Cisco networks, but you could use it for hacking other protocols in networks that have other vendor devices in it. Cisco is the biggest networking vendor in the world. So Cisco switches and Cisco routers will be found in many, many corporate environments around the world. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to hack Cisco devices using Yersinia running in Kali Linux. Now in this basic network, I've got a Cisco switch. This is a Catalyst 2960CG switch. The reason I'm using a small switch like this is it's fanless, so it doesn't make a lot of noise. I've got a Windows 10 a laptop that I've connected physically to the ethernet switch on port one. I've got a MacBook connected on port two. These devices are connected via ethernet cables to the switch. I've also connected to the console of the switch using a USB connection. In this example, I'm also controlling both of those devices from my local Mac. It just makes it easier to do the recordings. So I've got the connection to the MacBook and I'm controlling that via VNC. And I'm also controlling the Windows computer via VNC. The Windows computer, once again, is running Kali Linux within VMware Workstation Player. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a terminal and I'm going to type Y-E-R-S tab and you'll notice nothing happens. That's because this application is no longer installed by default in this latest release of Kali Linux. So I'm gonna type apt get update to update references on this Kali Linux host. And then I'm gonna say apt get install Yersinia. So I'm basically installing this application on Kali Linux. It used to be installed by default, but in this release is no longer installed. The version of Kali Linux that I'm using is 2019.3. You simply need to wait now for the application to install. Okay, so it's now installed. So I'll clear the screen. And notice now when I type Y-E-R-S tab, the command auto completes. And I can press dash or hyphen H to get help about the application. So we told that we can get the application version number by using uppercase V. H displays this help screen. G gives us a graphical user interface. I is interactive, uppercase D is daemon mode, lowercase D is debug mode. We've also got some logging options. So what I'm gonna type is Yersinia-G to get a graphical user interface. Now we're told that this is an alpha release, that's fine for our example. Notice once again that multiple protocols are supported, CDP, DHCP, 802.1Q, 
82.1x, DTP, HSRP, ISL, MPLS, STP, VTP, and we've got a log here. Now in this video, I'm assuming that you have knowledge of these protocols. To be able to hack networks, you need to have an understanding of the protocols that network devices use. Now, if you don't know what those protocols are, have a look at some of the videos that I've linked below or have a look at my course. In my CCNA course, I teach a lot of these protocols. You don't have to take my course if you don't want to. Have a look at other videos on YouTube or other CCNA courses. But for this video, I'm assuming that you have knowledge of these protocols. Now, in this example, I'll start PuTTY because what I want to do is connect to the console of the Cisco switch and show you how the switch has been configured. Before I do that, we need to know which console port to use. So I'm going to go to Device Manager. And here I can see that USB Serial Device COM3 is being used. So I'm going to specify COM3 in PuTTY and click Open. And now I'm connected to this switch. This switch has not been configured with best practices, and that's a problem. Because with hacking tools like Kelly Linux, if you don't configure a network device properly, hackers can get access to your network very, very easily. So if I type show run on the switch, it's got two DHCP pools configured. Port one on the switch is configured in VLAN one and port two is configured in VLAN two. In other words, this laptop is in a different VLAN to that laptop, but we're not going to let that stop us. Scrolling down, you can see that interface gigabit zero one is configured with defaults. Very bad idea. You don't want to use default configurations on a switch port on a switch. You should at least shut down ports on a switch that are not in use, or put them in a separate VLAN, or stop protocols like DTP being used. So as an example, show interface gigabit 01 switch port. What you'll notice is negotiation of trunking is on. Current administrative mode is dynamic auto. We've got DTP enabled on this port. That's something we don't want to do. So this command, show interface port number switch port shows us that the port is configured in VLAN 1, but DTP is enabled on that port. So again, show run interface gigabit 01. That's the configuration of port 1. Here's the configuration of port 2. I'll put the switches configuration below the video if you want to have a look at the switches configuration offline. But apart from that, this switch also doesn't have routing enabled. That means that there's no routing from one VLAN to another on the switch. At the moment, VLAN 1 is down because I haven't plugged in my Kelly Linux PC. So let me do that. And what we should notice is the port on the switch comes up, and it does. So show IP interface brief. This VLAN is still down, but we can see that interface gigabit 01 has come up. So after a while, that SVI or switched virtual interface should come up. And there you go, it's now come up. So VLAN 1 and VLAN 2 are configured on the switch. The switch is acting as a DHCP server and allocating IP addresses to devices in the relevant VLANs. Show VLAN shows us that gigabit 01 is in VLAN 1 Gigabit 02 is in VLAN 2. The MacBook has been allocated to this IP address, 10121, by the DHCP server. We can see that on the switch by typing show IP DHCP bindings. So that IP address has been allocated to the MacBook. According to the switch, this IP address has also been allocated, and that's probably my Windows computer. change the font size here to make it easier to see. So command prompt, IP config. This Windows computer has been allocated this IP address. 
but the PCs won't be able to ping each other because IP routing is disabled on the switch. There's no routing from one VLAN to another in this topology. So on my MacBook as an example, if the MacBook tries to ping the Windows computer, it can't do that because IP routing is disabled. There's no routing between the VLANs. But that's not going to stop us once again. Now currently the Kelly Linux host is configured to use NAT and it's been using my wireless connection to get access to the internet. This little network here doesn't have any internet access. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge the Kali Linux host to the Realtek USB gigabit ethernet family controller. So I'm going to bridge it to this ethernet connection and click OK. So in Kali Linux, I'll open up another terminal window. ifconfig will show us the IP address. At the moment, no IP address has been allocated. Do that command again and notice 10.1.1.3 has been allocated. So on the switch, show IP DHCP bindings, this IP address has been allocated to the Kali Linux host. So that means I've got three devices in this topology, physical Windows PC, MacBook plus Kali Linux virtual computer. So let's use Kali now to hack the network. Okay, so it's already picked up that it's connected to a switch through CDP. So we already know that we connected to a Cisco switch. On the Cisco switch, show CDP neighbor, it doesn't see any neighbors at the moment. But what we could do is launch an attack and send a CDP packet and click OK. In the log, we can see that an attack was launched and it's now finished. So back on the switch, show CDP neighbors. Still don't see a neighbor. So let's flood the CDP table of that switch. So as you can see, a lot of CDP packets are being sent out. On the switch, show CDP neighbors. Notice we suddenly have a huge amount of CDP neighbors. And you can see the platform here is Yersinia. So we are flooding the CDP neighbor table on the switch. That isn't really a fantastic attack, but it just shows you that by a simple attack, I can flood the CDP table of that switch. Notice how many packets are being sent out. After a short while, you'll see this has increased dramatically. The CPU on that laptop is going crazy. The lights on that switch are going mad. I am essentially flooding this switch with a lot of neighbor relationships. So if I type show CDP traffic, you'll notice a lot of input packets are being received by the switch. A lot of attack packets. To stop this, go to actions, list attacks. And I'm going to say stop all attacks. If you want to shut the program down and stop the attack, click exit but you probably want to go to actions, list attacks, and then you can shut down the attacks. Now, because this network is small, I mean, there's only one switch in this topology. I can't show you large scale attacks, but I'll continue showing you some basic attacks, which you can then apply to larger topologies. I'll show you larger topologies in separate videos. Now, very basic attack that can be used is attacking spanning tree. At the moment in this network, show spanning tree shows me that the switch is the root of the topology. Gigabit 01 is forwarding on VLAN 1. Switch is the root for VLAN 1. For VLAN 2, switch is also the root. So VLAN 2, switch is the root. Port that's forwarding is gigabit 02. I only have two ports currently up in this topology. Port 1 is in VLAN 1. We can see that with the show VLAN brief command. So gigabit 01 is currently in VLAN 1. Gigabit 02 is configured in VLAN 2. I only have two ports plugged into the switch. And again, port 1 is in VLAN 1. 
port 2 is in VLAN 2. Shows spanning tree root shows us that the current switch is the root for VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. We can see the root cost is zero for both those VLANs. And again, we can use the show spanning tree command to see that the switch is the root for VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. But let's change that. So I'm gonna launch an attack. In this case, it's a spanning tree attack. We're going to claim root roll and click OK. So Yersinia has picked up that there's a switch in the topology, but we're going to claim to be the root. So on the switch, show spanning tree. Notice for VLAN 1, the switch is no longer the root. It has a cost of four to get to the root. We can see that gigabit 01 is a root port with a cost of four. Previously, the port was a designated port when the switch was the root. So we've changed the role to root. This is the port that the physical switch is gonna to use to get to the root bridge, which is currently Kali Linux. For VLAN 2, we can see that the switch is root. Notice gigabit 02 is a designated port. Now, I won't have time to go through all the protocols. There's a lot of things you can do just with Yersinia within Kali Linux. I'll show you other hacks in subsequent videos. But please, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video. I've been